everybody. We're going to start our first lecture today. And uh, I don't know if you know, but right now the Chess Olympiad is going on. It's a very big event. That happens to be every two years. And the U.S. team is playing there, playing very well so far. And uh, But there was a lot of big upsets today. So today I want to show you uh, uh, one of the games. Well, Vladimir Kramnik was playing with the white pieces against Grandmaster Tomska from Poland. So Kramnik is, okay, let's say close to 2,800. His opponent was 2,600. So it was a 200-point upset. And uh, Kramnik lost this game. Uh, in fact, he got made it actually, checkmate on the board, and the Russian team lost to Poland. So this is the biggest upset of the Olympia so far. Two and a half for Poland, one and a half for Russia. So, so Tomska is the a player with the white pieces, and black is Kramnik. So we have e45, knight f3, knight c6, d4. Very sharp start from the white. Playing the scotch. Takes. Knight d4. Knight f6. Okay, if, if white plays knight c3 here, then black can pretty much equalize with the bishop b4. Knight c6. Bc. Bishop d3. Castles. Castles d5. It leads to a relatively relatively balanced position. Okay, so this is a common theory here. White plays queen f3. So um, white didn't want to do that, so he went for the knight c6 line. It's a little bit less popular. They're very sharp now. e5. White is immediately questioning the knight. Queen e7. Now it's pinning, the queen is pinning, so obviously, so you cannot capture, so, and also you try to take the pawn, and what is the, the theoretical move here for white? So, because if, if you just play f4, then he can play d6, so that wouldn't be that good. So what's the normal move here, the white plays? Caleb? Queen e2, protecting the pawn, and also that way on pinning the pin. Knight d5 now played. h4. Aggressive move by white. Trying to gain space. And also he wants to put the bishop on g5. Okay? It's by playing h4 and putting the bishop on g5. To attack the queen at some point. Knight, uh, sorry, queen e6 first. Act, you know, moving the queen so that way the bishop can have a scope. G3 played. And now a very interesting move by Kramnik. Knight to b4, preparing bishop a6 idea. And now the idea to play bishop a6. C4 is played. So bishop a6 doesn't come with the tempo, but bishop a6 played anyhow. Bishop f4, protecting, uh, protecting the pawn. So let's try to see here. If white just plays the move a3 here, right? White just plays a3. What do you think would be the best uh, option for black here? I see. Bishop takes c4. Queen takes c4. Queen c4. Bishop takes. Knight c2 check. Where to put the king? Yeah, question is. So you have to. Let's say I go here. I'm wondering if this is, is there a way to try to trap, you know? Is there a way to trap the knight? So maybe play 
Why, if white had just, you know, b3, bishop, b2, that, that would work. So maybe b3, rook b8, king c3. The idea is to play bishop b2. D5, yeah, so that's the problem. Takes bishop d6, right? Or maybe maybe one pawn takes and then d5, yeah? So anyway, it's, it's very sharp. It looks like black is doing absolutely fine here. It doesn't, because it, you cannot really get the, the knight trapped immediately. And so this doesn't quite work too well. So I think, I think uh, white was not very familiar with the opening because very quickly, you see, he found himself in big trouble. Bishop f4, I think already a dubious move. And now Kramnik played a very strong move here. Let's see who can find Kramnik's respond here. What move did he play here? You want to try to attack the center, OK? What can you do to attack the center? Neil. D6. A little better, a little better than that. More active, more active to break the center. You want to really break the center here. What is the idea to do it, huh? To attack. Assis. D5. You have a bishop here putting pressure, right? On a6, attacking. So you want to play D5, okay? To put pressure. A uh, lot, a lot of pressure on this diagonal, we see. A3. A3 played. And now the knight is trapped, no choice. What do you have to do here? Correct, Adi. Queen D1. Again, this is the game Tomska versus Kramnik played today actually at a chess Olympiad in Batumi, Georgia. What is the move here? Here Vladimir Kramnik is winning and he missed the winning move here. Bit surprising here, but what's the idea here? What he could have done to get the win? Caleb? Okay, that's interesting. Absolutely. Queen takes f5. Now, what? first of all, what is your main threat? There are two of them, actually. Yeah, queen e4 and knight c2. Queen e4 check. Winning the rook. And also knight c2 check. Two important threats you have. So after queen f5, if he takes, Queen e4 check, king d2, queen h1, and if it takes, and up exchange with a winning position. And if he plays the move, um, bishop takes c4. If you place the move bishop c4, then what can you do here? Kneel. Queen e4 check. Queen e4 check. King d2, correct. Check. Or castle maybe better, yeah? Castle check <coughs> and simply winning the queen and the game. Is this the game where Kramnik got checkmated? Mm -hmm. I mean, he missed this idea. So he played bishop takes f1. Now rook takes, uh, king takes f1. Now the knight has to retreat. Black is still doing great here, but it's, he's not winning here. Knight c3, knight c5, b4. 
Now, Black played a very interesting move here. Let's see who can find Kramnik's response here. Play b4, attacking the knight on c5. Michael? Um, d4. Absolutely d4. Instead of moving his knight, you push the pawn on d4, attacking. And now, if he captures, look at that fork, attacking the queen and attacking the rook. Excellent idea, because otherwise you have to go back to d7, okay? So you go queen d7, knight d7, and maybe queen d4, it's not as active. Knight d7, maybe king g2. So this way it's very active. So he took. Takes, and now the next move, which was pretty shocking. Now black is threatening to take on c5. It looks like he's very close to just be winning here. He's up a pawn, and black king is on f1. And this is the, the moment that it was pretty, very surprising, at least to me, that Kramnik didn't play this move here. It's a very natural and a very strong move here. After which, black has a very large advantage in the end game. So what is the move here that will force that? Caleb. Excellent. I guess when I said end game that give you a little hint that there is a queen trade. Of course. Now attacking the queen and attacking the rook. So if he takes, he takes. So now king d3, just, sorry, you take on c, so probably bishop e3. Now if long castle, he wants to put the bishop on d4. What would be the, the correct plan here? What would be the correct plan here for white, for black here, to get the advantage? What's the right idea here? What do you think? Assis. Rook b8? That's an idea. Rook b8 is an idea, definitely. King e2, maybe? Caleb? There you go. There you go. You want that king on c6, okay? He goes here. Boom. Take. That's it. Extra pawn, and you can hide back on c7. If rook b1, you just play rook b8. Very nice advantage. Yeah, this was a big mistake not to trade queens because. Black gets checkmated here. Takes, okay, queen d5, still attacking the rook. Bishop c5, rook c1, putting pressure. Okay, he could play bishop d4 here. You know, force, force the exchange. In that case, I think queen c6 needs to be played. And it should be maybe even slightly better for black, but Kramnik probably thought he's just winning here or has a very large advantage. So h6 played now. Things are getting a little bit tricky because now this rook is going to come into the game and there is some h6 threats. So, and if you play h6 yourself here, which we normally do, then it could be, uh, you know, there's some e6 ideas here as well with g7 hanging. So... You have rook h4, rook g6 ideas are out there too. So things are not so clear anymore. So that was a huge missed opportunity here for him. I mean, he, he, if he was going to play queen d5, just better off just play queen d5 here to force the exchange. Castle. Now, when you push the pawn all the way to h5, what do you do? Yes. H6. H6, of course. 
Yeah, now it played rook f8. I think better off is to keep the h file closed, even though this looks a little bit dangerous, but I think he's better off to play g6. He probably was concerned about e6 here, because if you play f6, that runs into a problem of e7, but actually, this is no problem. Take what? It's mate on g7, Ashish. He had to go bishop d4. And take. Yeah, and this is there's probably no advantage here, but uh, at the same time, black is not worse here. I mean. Okay, so he's for sure not going to lose this game. Strange decision. He played here. I'll take. Now, if somehow this queen gets to the h file, it's going to be some serious problems. So rook e6, bishop g5, queen a2. A clever move, attacking on f2 with a mate. Rook h2, white calmly defends. The problem now is for black, this rook on h2 is an excellent defender. It protects a2 and also constantly putting pressure on h7 as well. Okay? And here where Kramnik blundered. He played the move rook d5. I think better off just to play bishop Bishop d4 here was his best move. Rook d5 blunder. Who can tell me why this is a blunder and how is this move losing? By the way, the rook was under attack, so he had to do something. So that's why I'm here. You have to calculate, Neil. It's, you have to calculate. Think Ashish. Kramnik missed this idea. You've seen the game? No. I, I saw the news on chess.com. Oh, you saw the news on chess.com. Okay. All right. Please raise your hand if you know the winning idea. Yes? Excellent. Excellent, yes. Queen b4, threatening nothing else than a checkmate. Okay? And if you take the pawn, then there's bishop f6 check. And now we see that it's a complete disaster here for black. He has to play c5, but that blocks his bishop on b6. And now queen h4 swing in this side and now we see the importance you know that we talk about this h file and now white is putting pressure threatening mate and the rook is doing a fantastic job guarding two squares b1 and c2 guarding those both squares so there is uh, no way to defend against h7 so he played h6 Trying to at least delay the mate. What do you do here? Again, it's not still not too late to make a mistake and let Kramnik get back into the game here. It's still not too late to make a mistake. So what did he play? Grandmaster Tomska. Tomzak. Bishop F6. But that allows counterplay, Michael. Rook d2. And there is some counterplay, okay? Caleb. What's the idea after bishop f6, rook d2, queen h6? Ah, the bishop is blocked, so that we don't have the f2 check, unfortunately. So, so bishop f6. Okay, but... Uh, ah, queen d2, maybe. Ah, we still take, huh? Rookie one checks. Okay, that should be losing. Okay, bishop f6 is another move that most likely is winning. 
But I like to move in the game. So is there anything wrong with you taking the pawn on h6? Then you take it. Right? No need to, you know, take it and then you're ready to move your bishop back. You're ready to move your bishop back with a mating threat. So he played queen b3, last attempt to complicate the matters. Black doesn't even have a check here to complicate the position. So he goes here, threatening rook d1 check, and the final move. A nice finishing touch by Polish Grandmaster here. Nice touch by the Polish Grandmaster here. Should be more hands, more hands. The threat is Rook D1, right? How are we gonna stop it? Adi. Absolutely Bishop D2, look at that move. Stopping that Rook D1 and now threatening a very strong Queen to h8, mate. So Kramnik played king takes g7, and he allowed the mate in two. Check. I'm not sure. I think he didn't mind the, the fact he's getting mated, so he just allowed the actual checkmate on the board. Okay? So this was a very, very tough defeat and uh, cost Russia the match. Poland. Poland defeated Russia today at the Olympiad. Yeah. And that's the big news, the biggest upset so far we have. And uh, what's his name got made? So you guys understand the idea? So it was two big blunders here played by Kramnik in this game. Very uncharacteristic of him because he's such a great player here. The first blunder is here where he could, he's actually in a winning position, basically. All he needs to do is find which move? Queen f5. And look at those multiple threats out there. Knight c2, queen e4 check. Big problems. Not too hard to find either. I'm not sure what he missed here, because you're looking for, when opponent is undeveloped, you're looking for ideas like this to create threats. It's, it's puzzling. So it takes queen e4, and the second surprising moment was we played a good move, and they reached this position. White is in big, big trouble here, queen d4, and again. What's the most natural move? What is the move that you would play in this position? Queen d5. Absolutely, queen d5. Undoubling the double pawns, exchanging the queens, so there's no more attack left once the queens come off the board, right? So he has to take, and now king is coming in. You don't really have time to play uh, something like c6 because then you're not getting the pawn back. Bishop c5, king e7, and d4. I'm not returning these pawns now. These pawns are going to be very strong. They're likely to decide the outcome of this game. So very strange. Very strange, we see that queen d5 was missed. Takes, and now things got complicated. Okay, great, great job guys. Now we're gonna do some difficult positions, okay? Some top grandmaster games that you have to find the ideas. So this is a game between uh, young uh, Iranian grandmaster Firuza, Firuza versus Dreyev, Alexei Dreyev. Black to play and win. As you can see, black is dominating. He's got active rooks, queen, knight on d3, bishop, and things went wrong, definitely here for Firuja. But how can you find a way to break through here to get the victory? Yeah, this is something you want to spend some time because it's lots of calculation, okay? You have to play like a strong, almost 2,700 gram master. White? 
Driev, Alexey Driev, who is actually coming to St. Louis to play in the upcoming uh, the Fall Classic in A Group. So I'll, I will be facing him. So I'm also playing in that tournament. That's my next event. So he's a very experienced Russian Grandmaster. Huh? Who? Hammer. Yeah, Hammer. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting event. A lot of uh, interesting players. Yeah, it's a very even, evenly matched tournament. Everybody is between 26.50 to 26.30. Again, we're talking about winning. We're not just talking about improving move, creating threats, something very strong. Knight c1, rook takes c1. D2? The, the knight captures, yeah. 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 Actually, this idea, if, if our bishop was just here, would have been <laughs> awesome. Yeah, rook d1 mates. <laughs> it would have been a perfect combination. Yeah, just we just need the bishop there. The so like in this uh, position, so here, here, we just need to put, just push the bishop right here. <laughs> and then we take, take, sack, and mate on d1. <laughs> All right, well, it's a little bit harder than that, you know. So I have given this position to some very top players, including some grandmasters, to solve, okay? So it's a, it's a tough one. Lots of calculation required. Neil. Bishop d2. Bishop d2, and he finds the first move. How did you even think about D2? I have four pieces guarding that square, Neil. Okay, impressive. Very impressive, Bishop D2. Putting the bishop on the square where it's four pieces can capture. <laughs> Tell us why each of them don't work. Queen C2 check. Queen takes C2 mate. Checkmate. Checkmate. And if he takes the queen? Uh, just, uh, queen takes and now you have discovery check coming, and this is just completely hopeless. So let's see if you calculate it. Very impressive so far. Let's see if you calculate the outcome after this. You're down a full piece so far. But the good news is, white's pieces are paralyzed. They cannot move anything. The knight cannot move, the queen is hanging, the bishop cannot move rook, so they're, they're stuck. Which pawn is your target here that you want to take to get to his king? Huh? Perfect. Threatening mate. Now. B3. Michael. Queen C3, King B1. Assis. Why? Pawn takes? Mm. Messy, yeah? Better. Simpler. 
एक्सलन आदि गो परफेक्ट नाउ थ्रेटिंग चेक मेट ऑन चेक मेट ऑन ए टू सो इट हैज टू गो हियर Neil takes a check. Takes. And then you should check the other one. Checkmate. Uh, uh, That's how Grandmaster Drief won the game. All right? Tough one, I know. But, you know, you want to always do difficult positions because then easier comes will be much easier to see. Lots of calculation here. But you have to look for ideas like this. You have to realize that the big, big idea is that the bishop on c1. That is the piece that is protecting the position. And that's the piece you want to try to move. And here, you want to get a queen on c2. That is a very important idea. And here, that's why bishop d2 will do the job. Okay. Why to play and win? White to play when black white player is Viorel Bologan, uh, 2600 gram master against Anton Korobov, another sh high rank, almost 2700 gram master. Actually, white lost this game in just two moves. But if he plays the right move, he's actually winning. Korobov is playing for Ukraine at the Olympiad. Korobov, no, I don't think he played here. There is another guy who is coming to play is Kuzubov. Oh. That's different. Kuzubov, Korobov. Different. White to play and win. Again, this is a challenge because these are difficult positions, but just take your time and try to calculate as much as you can. This is going to improve your calculation. Okay? Did you calculate everything? Ken. Broke the F1. That's the move he played. Oh, that was the losing one? Yes. Oh, of course. Takes. Oh, takes. Check. <laughs> Sorry, Ken. <laughs> I'm thinking kind of like a grandmaster. <laughs> yeah, you're thinking like a 2600 grandmaster. That's not bad. <laughs> and knight d7 and white black eventually won <laughs> because he's up a piece. Well. What to do, Henken? Huh, what to do? I mean, I'm just looking at piling up on the pin piece. Seems normal, right? Yeah. But no. So it's not rook f1, okay? You're down the entire rook, though. So you need to... Just take the rook. Well, take the rook. Just play down a piece. The problem, I think, if you just do this, 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 I think he has this, right? Okay, maybe bishop c3 you have, but it doesn't seem very clear. Bishop here, I don't know, knight a6. Okay, it seems like White has a lot of pressure here, but doesn't look completely clear. Clear. All right. Yes. Absolutely. Excellent play. Bravo. Rook e1 is the winning move. Amazing, yes. You just played like a very strong grandmaster. Good job. Now, <laughs> now let's see why is this losing, okay? If he takes, takes, check. Look at the back rank here. Back rank checkmate. <laughs> yeah. 
All right. The bishop is hanging. If you go knight d7, bishop takes f7. So, oh, another idea. If he goes here, who can point out the winning move here? Who can play brilliant, huh? Which player can play really brilliant here to win? There are probably a few other ways to win, but Michael. Neil. Rookie seven. Most likely winning. Absolutely. Rookie seven, yeah? But I want Adi. Better. What other nice move you have here you can do? To deflect this piece here. <laughs> Caleb. There you go. And if he takes? Excellent. Excellent job by Caleb. So, it well, look like a deflection on the same ring. now he goes check though. This is the tough part. He probably looked at this. He thought check and then knight a6. He didn't see anything. But he missed something. He overlooked a very important detail here. If you move the king, I think he just plays here, Ashish, and rook f8. Okay. So bishop e3. Absolutely bishop e3, Neil. Now he takes. Now rook takes e3. Ding, ding. Whenever you have options to recapture, what do you do? You think without rushing because you know even though rookie three is the most natural move, but when you see a good move, look for a better one, right? Bravo. Now he develops the knight. Specify it. Specify what check. Specify your check, huh? And look at that fantastic checkmate. Down an entire queen, by the way. You're down an entire queen. And you win the game. So he has to play knight d7 to avoid. And now, now what are you going to do? Yes? What do you think? Me? No, young player. Uh, queen to e8. e8, he can take with a rook, you know? And in, in this position, he has this escape square with knight f8, okay? Why don't we put the queen somewhere else? What do you think? Queen where? Queen seven. Perfect. Very good. Now, he goes here. Rook af8. Another example when opponent, the, the pieces are just paralyzed. They cannot move anything. Now, one more neat move and the game is over. One more neat move and white wins the game here. Sheesh, good move needed to create a threat. Yes, in the back. I think queen. It's not a queen move, okay? It's not a queen move because at the moment you don't have anything with a queen. You need to bring more peace to build up, to build up more pressure, okay? Yes. So what's the idea here? Go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Rook F1. Very nice. Rook F1. Who is this kid? <laughs> it's a very nice, quiet move. Okay, you found two moves, yeah? Two, very good, excellent today, yeah? Now, the point here is, you're pressuring here, and how can black untangle here? You're just threatening to take now, take everything and mate. 
So the knight cannot move. The queen is hanging. So let's look at queen d8. Now, what do you do? You can knight f7. Perfect. Now, if he takes your queen, knight h6, double check, mate. You see that? Double check with the bishop, check with the knight, check with the bishop. Excellent, okay? That's a Morphe move right there. That is fantastic, yes. Yeah. So he has to take back. If he takes back with a rook, then you just take the queen. That's game over right there. So he has to go here with the knight. Knight takes f7. And now, what do you do? Better. Rook f7. Because... If he takes your rook, you have a queen d8 check, winning the rook. So he has to take back the queen. Rook takes e7 check. Goes here. Rook takes d7, winning the game. Okay? And at the end, we see that white is up a piece and winning. Difficult position. See, it took some time to figure out, but... You have, basically, you're in a situation where most of your pieces are pretty active, but you have to realize which piece is not in the game, and that's the rook on a1. And the threat is now you want to bring the rook into the game. With You have rook f1, and you have rook e1 here. So that's why you have to choose between two. And rook f1 is also a natural move, but then bishop takes d6. So that's why you have to go with the move. Once again, let's go over this again because there are a lot of interesting lines. So what's the winning move here? Rook e1, attacking the bishop. If bishop takes d6, pawn takes d6. Queen takes b6, check. Same thing like in a game will result into a checkmate on e8. So he has to play now queen d7. And now you have two winning moves. One is rook e7. And the second one is queen b7. Again, queen cannot be captured because of the mate on e8. So he plays bishop d4 check, which is the only move. Bishop. Now, see, many, most of the people, including this grandmaster, he probably thought check, and he just thought, oh, king g2, knight a6, and he didn't see anything. And that's where he stopped. Because bishop e3, it's not an easy move to see. Because you're sort of exchanging pieces while you're down a rook. But by doing that, you're improving which piece? Queen. The queen. The queen, right? Because now you're threatening queen e8 mate. So he, again, if he goes knight a6, the difference is he keeps the control of e7, but he gets mated because of which idea? Check, check, and mate. Cannot go back, cannot go anywhere. So we have knight d7 and now white is activating his queen queen e7 and now rook f1 now look at all the pieces the white pieces are very active and you know despite being down a rook here you cannot protect on f7 so i have to go here queen knight d8 f7. knight takes f7 you're sacrificing your queen actually here because of which move Double check. When double check happens, king has to move. And if king cannot move anywhere, that is double check. Mate. What game is this from? Uh, this is the game Bologan Korobov. This didn't happen in the game, though. Oh. In the oh, game, he, right. he blundered. He played, he, played your, he played your move, yeah. <laughs> so takes, knight takes f7, and now... Rook takes f7. If rook takes f7, d8 is hanging. So now rook g7 is threatened, taking everything here. So he, he, he takes here, he takes the queen. So he played queen e7, and now check, check, and winning the game. All right. Excellent job. These two positions we did are very, very hard. So it took some time, but you know you guys managed to solve them. And uh, you always want to study Grandmaster games, even though they might be difficult a little bit, but eventually you will get the ideas why they're playing each move. So you guys did a great job. And uh, 
So we're going to take a little break now and get ready for the next class at 7.30, okay? Thanks for coming. Mm -hmm.